Federal budget last night, fellas. Very exciting. It's a uh, bit like Christmas Day for me, federal budget. No, I was just going to say, ask you about that. That's where I thought we might start. Shane, did you watch the Treasurer's speech? Of course. You it's, did? It's the best part of it. The speech oh. itself is the, uh, is the most enjoyable bit. I personally, I don't know about you, Andrew, but I personally have trouble listening to a politician for longer than... I just won't have theory in highlights this morning. That was <laughs> yeah. enough, enough for me. Right. Yeah. I know. We did actually promise that we would do a budget in, didn't we? But that didn't happen. I, I did a budget in at home. Yeah. So <laughs> I, 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 I worked from home yesterday too. So With yeah. your son too. You were yeah, this I did. I made him watch the budget as well. I'm sure he would have really loved that. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. All right. So look, anyway, they've handed down their, their budget, um, which again... Mm-hmm. All proposals, nothing in legislation just yet. And what we thought we'd do today is, is simply go through what that actually looks like, what the proposals are. Some are highly relevant, some are perhaps not so relevant for some of our clients, and um, we might skim through a few. But yeah, so just high level, guys, and any thoughts you want to share? Well, I think a high level, I mean, obviously, the, for me, the headlines were uh, the fair chunk of spending was probably the the, the part they led with, and, and, I, and I think in, in, in fairness too, I mean, they've tried to be quite targeted around yeah. who needs some support right now, and you know, as we've spoken about quite a few times now, economic updates, cost of living's high, uh, and those that need some support, certainly got some assistance last night, which was, uh, which was great to see. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I, I agree with those sentiments. Obviously, the uh, type of screen out and the energy relief for those, I guess those feeling that also, the rest of the population and, and then by extension the, the job seeker and um, yeah they, those on welfare and support payments yeah. yeah clearly targeting making life a bit easier for that cohort of people yeah it's interesting though because we we're chatting about this morning as the, the first thing we did when we got in and we it, it feels a little bit like it's a it's a almost a pre-election type budget I mean there's there's spending so they Give us pushing money out yep. to the economy. So, but obviously, you know, felt it was needed. So, I guess one of the first things we can talk through is the energy price relief plan. Um, so, what they're talking about there is a five hundred dollar uh, saving or credit, I suppose, in uh, for eligible households uh, for those that need it, and that includes you know, pensioners. Um, Senior healthcare card holders, family tax benefit A and B recipients, and uh, small business customers are actually looking like it'll be six hundred and fifty dollars for eligible small businesses. So it seems like a, a good yeah. issue, doesn't and it? And it's in addition to what we've seen, particularly in Victoria, the the state assistance mm. on those the same uh, type of schemes. So yeah, I mean it's certainly helpful for today, which is uh, you know not to be sneezed at. We're not going to say no. Oh, yeah. well, no one's going to say no. Um, Okay, and then you know, the changes, proposed changes to um, cheaper medicines. So I wasn't really across this one too much, but I think the way it worked was there was going to be, you can buy two months worth of scripts as opposed to one month worth of scripts. Is that, is that how you read it? Yeah, it's doubling stuff, 30 days now, as opposed to 60 days. Right, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, bulk billing. Mm. This is an interesting one, I think, mm. because uh, you know, tripling of the bulk billing incentive for, for doctors is it's a significant change the way they're remunerated, right? But I think if, if anything, isn't the background behind it is that people who can't afford to pay uh, for a doctor's appointment are not necessarily seeking medical support today. So yeah, this is this is an incentive to try and encourage doctors to once again bulk bill those who, who need some medical support. Uh, I, I I love the the concept of this very. Uh, uh, policy change. Uh, I know. I just hope, maybe the, the goodness in me hopes that it does play out that those people who need the support actually get it, as compared to this being monetised in some way, shape, or form. So, but I think on the surface, it's a great one. I think really, if it is monetised in some way, shape, or form, it's it still requires the the doctors to see a patient, right? So, Correct, yeah. or more patients, and so perhaps this, if the doctors make more money, they're probably working harder. Yeah. So subsequently, it's a good be coming out. But subsequently, that then means that there's more patients that have been seen. Yeah, it's I, I know. To it's, 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 it's doctor, it takes two, two or three weeks. Yeah, agreed. Which is important. So there's the, there's the cheaper aspect of it, but there's also the yeah, it says that I mean make it easier. 
So, mm -hmm. to your point, it's it's very hard to go and make an appointment yeah. to see a doctor unless you can, you know you're going to be yeah. needing a doctor in two or three weeks' time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All these are. Uh, okay, so a few, some slight changes to superannuation, some significant, some not so significant. Um, I, I would class this in the, the significant change. Um, so it was, it was mooted that for, where are we now? Three years now, where we've had minimum pension drawdowns halved. Mm. Um, so that started in 1920. Um, that is not being extended extended beyond next year yeah so that's that then means andrew that if you've got a million dollar pension and you're supposed to take out six six percent you actually have to take out six percent this year or sixty thousand dollars yeah yeah so yeah it, it, you know that that would be a case of if if the last two or three years under the halving of the minimum drawdowns if if people have been able to accommodate the, and not need that extra Money they've been able to retain that in superannuation, whereas now this is where yeah, the, they'll have to take take the dubbing out. So yeah, it could be a case of what do you do with that surplus cash that you don't you don't need that you sort of got used to to not needing over the last couple of years. Mm. Um, so that that could come into play as to okay, what what are the strategies around? What do we do with that surplus cash? Okay. What's the thinking from the government there? Do you think, Shane? So, so why would they not extend it? Do you think? Well, I think, and you've got to remember, it's this is a return to normal, right? Not necessarily a change. This is just mm. going back to normal, right? So, the, the the reason they bought this in originally was, I think, for the fact that going back to the financial crisis, we utilise the same concept, and really what it was, we saw mass drawdowns in markets, and yeah. back to nineteen twenty, COVID hit forty percent drawdown in equity markets, forcing people to draw out of their portfolio whether they need it or not. Yeah. At a point in time when markets are getting beaten up. Uh, you know, is, is, is destructive to wealth over time. So sensibly, the policy was introduced to allow people to leave their money invested to avoid the drawdown. Uh, and now perhaps we're, you know, trying to get through the end of this, you know, kind of pandemic, economic kind of disruption period. So I think, you know, perhaps with hopefully more, uh, you know, pathway to normality, uh, you know, this too is a return back to, to normal. Mm. Yeah, no, look, I think that's fair. That's right, it is a return to normal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, one of the other themes that's running through through this is the government wants us to use our retirement benefits first before we go and claim the age pension. Mm -hmm. right? So, and that's that's probably going to go through into the, the next one here. Um, no, not yet. So there's also been a change to the there's there's been uh, no freezing to the transfer balance cap. So the transfer balance cap was previously. Started at 1.6, moved to 1.7. There was some commentary, probably more media than anything else, that it was going to stay at 1.7 um, with an increase in the level of uh, indexation. It's now going to be 1.9 as at the 1st of July, 2023. Um, so that, any any comments there, guys? Anything really you want to... Oh, I, I think through? it's just the obvious that if, you, you know, if you're on the cusp of starting the pension, Wait, wait a month mm. or so. Wait perhaps. till first of July, perhaps. You know, yeah. based, based on situation, of course. Because I guess you then get to use all of the one point nine that then yeah. becomes tax free, as opposed to the one point seven if you start yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, employees' superannuation contributions. Yeah, I mean this. This I think this is a. I mean, I, I, I'll explain this a little bit first. So essentially the uh, small business, all business have to pay their superannuation guarantee at the same time wages are paid mm -hmm. from 2026 onwards. At the moment, they can be paid as infrequently as quarterly. So we've got a little bit of, as employees, you have a little bit of flexibility around when you pay this. And, and effectively it's because of the fact that it's logistically difficult for some businesses to, to yep. organise. So I think, you know, this, I, I love the idea of this policy and, you know, again, the backdrop behind it was there was a, a huge amount of people who weren't actually paid superannuation and, and by and large as under 35s who received significantly lower super contributions than employees that simply didn't pay it. Yep. So this will force that to be paid every single time they're, they're paid a salary, so that's a good change. Uh, and I'm always optimistic about the technology capabilities to catch up because 
if this was in today, I think a lot of businesses would really struggle to actually execute this. Agreed. But we've got, what, three years to, uh, to mm-hmm. make this happen. Yep. So, you know, in three years' time, uh, you know, Zero will probably be very happy as an accounting software to uh, implement this for many small businesses. Yeah, I think so. And I think it, it does, it does keep it simpler for employees. So you know, I'm not sure how many times clients have asked me, they've said, well, my pay slip says that I've been paid $2,000 into my super, but I've just checked my super and it's not there. Mm. What's happening? There must be a problem. Yeah. And it's because actually at the moment it's quarterly, right? So what is that? have to pay super quarterly. So much better. It's much a good sense. It's it's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of, um, small businesses being able to cope with that regularity of payment. But as you just said, businesses like Zero and you know, Mile perhaps um, will be able to help and support yeah. in that space. And the time to plan for it too, as you said, three three years away. So that yeah, yeah. yeah. plenty time. of time. Yeah. I'm sure the government can change it in mind between now and then, can't oh, Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is fairly significant. Mm. Um, so a change to the total superannuation balance tax is what they've called it. So Andrew, do you want to maybe talk us through how this, how this, what the proposal, remembering proposal, yes, is? Yeah. So this, this is on the back of yeah the announcement that came out from Jim Chalmers what probably a couple of months ago. Mm. Where he, yeah, he, we'll he know. muted yep. this as an idea as to uh, increase the or reduce the tax concessions for. Uh, those with super balances greater than three million dollars, mm. effectively. So this is, yeah, again, it's just a proposal uh, as it effective with an effective date of first of July two thousand twenty-five. Uh, so it's basically du- a doubling of the the tax on earnings greater than three million dollars, effectively. Uh, so does that mean I'm going to interrupt here because yeah. I know this is going to be the first question we'll be yeah. asked? Does that mean if I've got a f- I don't have a four million dollars super balance, but let's imagine I did. That'd be amazing. You might, you time. might if there's no indexation applies. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Cam? Yeah, twenty years. I'm young, you Andrew. I'm young. Um, but let's say I had a four million dollars superannuation balance as at the first of July, twenty twenty-five. So are they going to take? It's thirty percent, isn't it? So are they going to take thirty percent of my million dollar amount above that? Yeah. Look, I, I think we all need to have a look at the. Devil's always in the detail. Have a little yes, bit further. that is true. Uh, just looking into it but further. It is, but it but is. That's notionally, that's that's the concept. So it's the earnings above uh, above three. So it potentially looks at the movement in your total super balance. Mm. Yeah, above mm. on a pro rata basis above the three million dollars. It's fascinating, isn't mm. it? You know, what? I was going to say this is going to be very interesting to how they figure this out, right? Oh. The, and that was the point of the question. Yeah. And, and you, think, yeah. but you think about this broadly as well, right? So if we refer back to the transfer balance gap we just spoke about a moment ago, so someone is in retirement, they've got their $1.9 million now concessionally taxed at zero, well, it's taxed at zero. 1.9 to 3 million, I then assume, is taxed at 15%. Yeah. 3 million above taxed at 30%. It starts to sound very much like income tax rates. It, it does. In <laughs> terms of scales. Right. So yes. I'm sure actuaries are going to be the winners in some of this accounting no. side of things because it's, uh, you know, it's 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 administratively, that's a, it's a big change. Uh, but I get that they want to tax. I, I understand where the government's coming from when they say that they want to tax people with those sorts of balances in super. I understand the concept. But I think there's, there's much simpler ways of going about it. I mean, that's what we were chatting about this morning, just an earnings tax for everyone of, um, in pension phase of 5% or you know, something mm. like that. It's just, it's just simpler. This just brings more complexity into the system. As you said, the actuaries go, oh, here we go. Yeah. And it's this, they'll do respect to the actuaries. Um, so it could be done yeah. in a much easier and simpler yeah. way. And, and the politics behind this as well a little bit is that the, well, the numbers yeah. of, of super anyone's that are impacted by this Statistically, are quite low relative. Yeah. Um, so therefore, they can you know, go out a bit. Interestingly, the the forecast revenue for this is about two billion dollars a year. Two billion. So it's a big number. Uh, yeah. Right. So. Gee. Yeah, it's not insignificant in its uh, uh, tax collection. 
So as you said before, Andrew, the devil is definitely in the detail, and it'll be interesting to see what how it's all applied. Um, and once we understand that, you know, my mind just goes straight to how can we help? How can we alleviate yeah. um, any clients that might actually be in this position? Yeah. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? I guess in a more broader sense, not just this this particular initiative, but what it does highlight is that the government's continue to tinker with superannuation. So people would have been running with a lot of strategies over time to to perhaps, you know, obviously not, not with this in mind. Mm. Thinking, you know, oh yes, we're we're setting ourselves up, we'll invest, we'll, we'll put a lot of money into superannuation. Uh, whether it's uh, invest, whether it's properties or shares, etc., uh, under a certain you know set of parameters and legislation. Now, now the goalposts are moving, so that sort of now they're looking at oh, how do we unwind that, or mm. and they haven't got a lot of time to you know if this if this gets up uh, and is endorsed and legislated, but we're effectively looking at two two financial years. What what can they do in that time to mm. to perhaps mitigate against the yeah. future impact? And I think incredibly frustrating for those people with more than three million dollars yeah. in super because they, they those people have done incredibly well to get to that point to be able to do that, and that was the place to put money. Yeah, right? that was that encouraged was, to do yeah, so. Absolutely yeah. encouraged to do it. And then all of a sudden, ah, oh, sorry. And, and importantly, this is off back to a few years ago where we had the introduction of transfer balance cap. Yeah, that's right. So you wind back six or seven years ago, this whole amount of money is tax free. For a person right. in pension phase, yep. Then transfer balance caps into you know restricted tax free amount, fifteen percent on the above, and, yep. and most people that's not that's fair. And now we've thirty percent, so it's it's it is being very targeted at, at a particular cohort of the population. Yeah. Well, that's not fair. All right, there we go. Devil in the detail. Personal tax. Uh, so, from 1 July 24, the stage three tax cuts are still, we're still looking at these these tax cuts, which are obviously significant. Um, and, you know, this is a simplification, I suppose. There's less bands, but from 24-25 financial year, we're looking at the first, you know, first 18,200 tax free, and anything above that you pay 19%. From 45 to 200, it's a cap tax rate of 30%. Anything above 245% plus Medicare levy, obviously. Um, and in comparison to how that is now, there's, we've done this little uh, chart here which sort of starts to map the benefits mm -hmm. over time. Um, and you know what you can see is that it's almost worth nine, that change is worth, worth around $9,000 to someone who's on you know, $190,000 a year in income. It's pretty significant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised that this one mm. may not have been part of this budget actually. I thought it could have been, you know, this could have been one of those hard decisions the government decided to, to put in place now as opposed to, you know, we're still, what, two or three years away from the next election. Yeah. Uh, you know, coming up to an election, I would understand that they would keep keep these promised mm. cuts, but in light, of, in light of the economy and where things are at, admittedly this is still 12 months away, but just would have thought that maybe it might have been appropriate perhaps to, to delay or defer or cancel. Well, I guess there's a consideration that this is slightly inflationary too, right? Mm. Yeah. Not yet, because it hasn't been implemented, yeah. Yeah. but perhaps they're going, well, let's yeah, just see true. where we're at yeah. this time next year. True. Yeah. yeah. And I think, Andrew, that's a great call out as well about the, the hard calls, because I, I think broadly the budget didn't really no. hit too many hard calls. No. Yep. It, it was very... For, for an opportunity where uh, first budget handed down post a significant spending year on the back of record inflation, it was probably an opportunity to make some hard calls if, yeah. if needed, but it didn't. So, so, you know. And particularly a lot of the talk of this, this first year's a surplus, but the years beyond that are deficit. Deficit, I think. Yes. So that was a bit surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's been an amendment to the electric car discount. Obviously, don't know too much about this one. Um, I think my understanding is uh, that any plug-in hybrid electric cars will no longer get the fringe benefits tax exemption from 1 July 25. So it sort of feels like it's yeah, a bit further down the track, isn't it? Uh, business tax. We we're talking about this just off air, weren't we? 
There's a uh, twenty thousand dollar instant asset write off. Great. I love to see how many times count back how many times there's been some sort of asset write off float through the budget. Um, I think it's has it been every year? Every, just, 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 just a different number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This year it's twenty k. Yeah. There's been a legislative amount of a thousand dollars for ever as far as I remember. Yeah. Like. But then they make these small tweaks for each year. Yeah. I mean, it's, essentially, it's as we all speak about. This is not free money. This is simply a tax deduction. You can write off an asset up to the value of twenty thousand dollars in one in one hit, rather than depreciate over uh, you know a few years. So. Yeah, we always think the uh, the money side of us comes out and says, "Well, if you don't need to spend the twenty grand, that's right. This is not a new thing big <laughs> enough to uh, to go on with. You want to go and spend that's the twenty right. k, right? Exactly. So yeah. Anyway, that's an interesting one. Uh, we've been through the energy incentive, so we might just move through that one. Uh, Social security. There has been some, I guess, some different announcements there, um, you know, and one of them is certainly the increase uh, of the base rate for uh, job seeker, youth allowance, parenting payment, I'll study, ab study, disability support pension, and um, special benefit by $40 a fortnight, not $20 a week. Yeah. That's not bad. It's fair. It's fair. I mean, the cost of living is extraordinary. So, so. Which I guess is then on top of the, the CPI related increase as well. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. True. And again, a little bit of a compound impact. And a higher CPI on the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah good call. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Parenting payment. Now, this is quite a uh, quite a interesting one because at the moment single parents do get a fair degree of uh, payments that cut off as soon as their youngest child is eight. Mm-hmm. And eight, speaking first hand with eleven and a twelve year old. It's pretty young to have funding yeah. cut because they're starting to get to that expensive point in, in, mm-hmm. in time. So, so, so it, when just to interrupt, sorry. Um, so, didn't didn't what happen was that you would get the parenting payment and then you would just flick over into um, job seeker, right? So, which is a lower amount. Yeah. But then, by the of fact, you go to job seeker, you're then trying to get a job. Yeah. Yeah, actively, and, and the obligations that go with it, right? That's right. Yeah. So th- I think this is, this is, you know, there'd be a, a, a portion of the population will benefit from this in terms of allowing them to care for their children up until the age of 14 more actively yeah. as compared to needing to go to work when their children are much younger. So, yeah. I, I it's, a, it's quite a healthy or significant increase too, right? So you go from yeah. 745 dollars a fortnight to 922. Yeah, it's a, it's a good chunk of money. It's good. It seems that seems pretty good to me. Uh, so there were some slight changes to the work bonus to incentivise pensioners back into the workforce. Tight employment market just need to get people working, um, and my understanding is you can use it was a four thousand dollar credit. Yeah, yeah. four thousand dollar credit into the income bank. So it seems yeah. positive yeah. again. Too, That's right? good. So aged care. Um, there has been. Some mood changes from an aged care perspective. One of the main ones I thought was uh, paying aged care workers appropriately. Mm. Yeah. So it was a what was the percentage Fif- increase? Fifteen percent, I think. Yeah. Yeah, fifteen percent increase in in minimum wage. So you know, hopefully yeah. that because there's a crisis there, right? Like if there's not enough workers. Mm. Yeah. You got an aging, aging population. Aging yeah. population. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be you know sort of priced at a point or yeah you know, paid at a point more so. Where people are attracted to go and work in that space. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's sensible, uh, sensible change there. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I mean, that sort of takes us through to the end of what we were going to talk through. Are there any uh, broader considerations that we we need to perhaps think about, talk about? Uh, look, I think the only other thing that I'd sort of maybe reflect on or think about from a budget point of view is that. Uh, you know, we do get an insight into what Treasury is thinking about the, mm. the broader. Uh, economic backdrop, and we yeah. will talk more about this in a subsequent reporting for the market update uh, to come out shortly as well. But uh, the key things that I saw in the in the Treasury assumptions were that uh, still forecasting that we don't have a recession here in Australia. They they are suggesting that our GDP growth will decrease to around one point five percent next financial year. Uh, so we technically avoid a recession according to the calculations. Yeah. And interestingly enough, uh, you know, with the rising debt or government debt for all their forward estimates, the interest bill they've calculated is actually 
lower going forward. So, you know, by you know, default, they're su suggesting that we're going to be having, you know, meaningful reductions in interest rates that will stick mm -hmm. for longer to spark growth again, but also decrease the serviceability of the government debt after that. So it's an interesting kind of, you know, thought where the government sit. Uh, I, I love thinking, seeing what they think. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always come to fruition, but uh, well, the assumptions yeah. they're making and, and well, and those of treasury too, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was fascinating, I thought. Uh, and the other thing I, I would sort of note broadly is that, you know, we're having a surplus issue, which is quite amazing. Uh, but more so, we've had extraordinary commodity prices and, you know, record High employment. Employment. Yeah, record unemployment. So it's massive tax collection. Mm -hmm. um, so at least we, we've got a surplus to, uh, to tick off on that front. At least it's a sort of <laughs> a nice change that it has been left that way. Yeah. And, and I guess aligned with the, um, perhaps their assumption around lower interest rates moving forward is perhaps the, the run down to normalised inflation within two years. I think they're forecasting what, 3.25% next year. Two years, is it? Yeah, yeah. I think the year after, back within the RBA range of two or 3%. Yeah. Well, the government can predict the future. That's great. Yeah. Well, Sounds okay with me. interestingly, the last thing I'll say about that is predicting the future <laughs> potentially. <laughs> uh, but there is a global phenomenon at the moment which seems that uh, governments and their fiscal policy are completely ignoring monetary policy and the Reserve Bank and the central banks of the world are left to do the heavy lifting here. So, uh, you know, maybe they can't predict the future. They just made, <laughs> let's change the rules like they're changing the Reserve Bank now to kind of help to predict the future. Uh, I, saw, I saw a great analogy about um, use, use of an aeroplane and co-piloting. So one co-pilot is the RBA and the other co-pilot is is the government, so RBA, monetary policy, budget, fiscal policy. So how do you, how do you yeah, fly the plane when you've got those two competing um, pilots, I suppose? Use the yeah. autopilot. That's what I was going to use the eject seat to sort of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's all you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That depends. Depends yeah. what's going on in politics. All right, thank you. Thanks very much, guys. That was great, I thought. Yeah. And um, you know, we'll get this out to, to our clients in the next couple of days. Any questions, of course, let us know. Um, the, what we've chatted about, obviously, is of a general nature. It doesn't take into account your specific needs, circumstances. Uh, so you need to think about your own financial position, objectives and requirements, and seek professional advice if required. Got that disclaimer out. Thanks, guys. Okay. That was great. Thank you. Bye for now. Cheers. 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 Cheers.